it's a good news, bad news kind of situation. The bad news is that you've been stranded on a desert island. The good news is that you are not alone. The bad news is that everyone else there is a cannibal. The good news is that they are just as inclined to eat you for dinner as each other, so you have a fighting chance. Here's how this works. We can number the cannibals 1 through 12. Cannibal number 1 will begin by deciding whether to cook you or not. If they don't cook you, you survive, and the game ends. If they do cook you, well, that's it for you. On the other hand, by spending the time tending to the fire, cannibal number 1 has left himself vulnerable. As a result, cannibal number 2 will then have a decision to make. He'll have to decide whether to eat cannibal number one or not. If he decides not to, that's once again the end of the interaction. But if he cooks cannibal number one, he'll leave himself vulnerable. That allows cannibal number three the option to cook cannibal two or not. And that's the way it works all the way down the line. If at any point a cannibal decides not to eat the person to the left of him, that will end the interaction. But as long as everyone is cooking, the next cannibal down the line will have the decision whether to continue that process or not. Each cannibal's most important objective is to stay alive. And conditional on staying alive, each cannibal prefers having dinner to not having dinner. Today's puzzle is simple. Will you survive? Or are you doomed to suffer a grisly end? While you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Today's hint is that you need to apply backward induction, which is the subject of Chapter 2 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. Are you ready for the solution? Obviously, if the game turns out poorly for you, it's because cannibal number one has eaten you for dinner. But whether cannibal number one wants to eat you for dinner depends on whether he expects cannibal two to eat him after he's eaten you. And whether cannibal number two plans to eat cannibal number one, in fact, depends on whether cannibal number three plans to eat cannibal number two, and so forth. As a result, Instead of thinking about this from the beginning of the game, we should be thinking about it from the end of the game and working backward. That is, we should be using backward induction. So let's do that. Imagine that we're in a situation where every other cannibal has been consumed, other than 11 and 12. It's now 12's turn to decide whether to cook cannibal number 11. Well. Cannibal number 12 has no other cannibal behind him threatening him. As a consequence, he's free to go ahead and consume cannibal number 11 no problem. So this is a bad outcome if you're cannibal number 11. 12 is definitely going to eat 11 here. We can use that to inform cannibal number 11's decision. Imagine we're in the situation where we're down to the final three cannibals. It's now Cannibal 11's turn to decide whether to eat Cannibal number 10. But Cannibal number 11 reasons that Cannibal number 12 will eat him if he leaves himself vulnerable. As a consequence, he is going to decide not to eat Cannibal number 10, knowing that if he were to do so, he himself would die later. Thus, 10 is going to survive and that informs 10's decision about whether to eat 9. Because 11 is threatened by 12, 10 feels safe, and as a consequence is going to go ahead and eat number 9. That's also going to inform 9's decision. When 9 has to decide whether to eat 8, 9 is now threatened by 10. And as a consequence, 9 is going to let 8 live due to that threat. Cannibal number 8 can reason through all of that and use it to inform his decision about whether to eat cannibal number 7. He is not threatened by 9 because 10 is threatening 9. And as a consequence, he can go ahead and eat cannibal number 7 without any consequence. 
And I'm guessing you're starting to see the pattern form. Every other cannibal is free to have dinner, because the next cannibal is threatened by the cannibal after that. Now we can quickly go through the rest of this. Seven is scared of eight, so he will not eat six. Six, however, is not worried about seven, so he will eat number five. Number five is scared of number six, so he's going to protect himself and not eat four. Four is not scared of five, so he'll go ahead and eat number three. Three is scared of four, so he'll protect himself and not eat two. Two is not scared of three, so he will go ahead and eat one. And now one, when he's thinking about whether to consume you, is scared of two, and so he will not. He will choose to protect himself. Which means congratulations. Somehow, you survive this island full of cannibals. One interesting thing about this game is that your survival depends entirely on whether there are an even or odd number of cannibals. If there are an even number, like what we had here, you survive. That's because each pair of cannibals is allowing deterrence to transpire. As soon as you have an odd number of cannibals, we run into problems. It's still the case that a pair of cannibals will deter, but at the end we have one extra one because we have an odd number of cannibals. That allows that odd cannibal to eat you while having his own assured survival due to the pairs of cannibals that follow that one cannibal. Did you figure it out? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.